Roborock recently introduced their new S7 at CES 2021, which is entirely online this year because of the pandemic. It's got a lot of exciting new features like a highly anticipated auto empty bin, which Roborock fans have been waiting for for a long time, and a vibrating mopping head like the uh, T8 AIVI. Unlike the T8 AIVI, the mop can actually lift out of the way, which is very nice because right now with the T8 AIVI or any um, combination mopping robot, if you have the mop attached, the robot, um, assuming it can detect carpets, will avoid carpets entirely. If it can't detect them, of course, try to mop them. But with the uh, mop being able to lift out of the way, the robot can actually clean your entire house. So it can vacuum and mop hard floors and then go onto carpets, lift the mop out of the way, and clean them. Now, among these new features is a new um, brush design along with a floating brush housing. Uh, the new brush is a, the rubbery material that Roomba uses and the floating brush housing is designed to bring the brush closer to the floor and improve cleaning ability. And that brush is the reason I made this video because while rubber brushes do clean better than either bristle or hybrid bristle and rubber brushes, that cleaning performance comes with a price. And that price is something I'm going to talk about in a minute. Meanwhile, I just want to say this auto empty bin looks kind of weird. It's got a see-through um, dirt storage container, which is kind of odd. I mean, it looks really cool when it's empty, but when it's full, it's full of nasty dirt, so I'm not sure what they were thinking with that. The reason I made this video is recently I discovered that um, my Roomba i7 and S9 were scratching my floors. And I explained why this was, and the problem was twofold. The first was that the um, these uh, rubber-like brushes, I'm not sure what they're actually made of, they pick up dirt, which stays embedded in the brush, and if that dirt comes in contact with the floor, which it does because of the floating brush design, that dirt is going to scratch your floor. Now, um, this is where the Roborock's new brush design becomes problematic, or potentially problematic. I shouldn't say problematic because they, they could have taken a bunch of steps to um, remove or completely eliminate the scratching. We just won't know until the robot comes out and people can test it. So let's talk a little bit about brush design. There are two main types of brushes on the market today, these hybrid bristle and rubber brushes. I'm going to keep saying rubber even though it may not actually be rubber, and these um, entirely rubber brushes. Some of the less expensive robots also use um, fully bristled brushes with no rubber parts, but I don't have any of those so I'm not going to talk about them. So the reason for the rubber brushes or the hybrid bristle and rubber brushes is that just bristles alone don't agitate carpet fibers very well. Um, the rubber brushes do, and agitating the carpet is necessary to get a nice deep clean. When it comes to hard floors, bristles do great with pet hair and large debris, but for very fine debris, they only do an adequate job. Whereas the rubber brushes act like a squeegee, and basically just wipe all that stuff into um, you know, the, the extraction chamber of the vacuum. And you, know, you don't have to take my word for it or look at my little demonstration. You can see that by looking at the, um, the cleaning port of a Roomba. Look at all that nasty fine dirt in there compared to um, a, a robot that uses a hybrid brush uh, that has cleaned the same place for about the same length of time. So you can see that there's a lot less fine debris that the hybrid brushes pick up. So what's wrong with the uh, rubber brushes? Well, as you can see with this brush that I just used to wipe up flour, there's not much flour on it, whereas the rubber brush has flour all over it. And unfortunately, this is also true of things that are actually abrasive, like, you know, little dirt particles. They stick to the brushes. Here I'll show you some used, um, dirty Roomba brushes. And you can see all that dirt stuck in there. Now, that's, you know, little abrasive particles. You could make sandpaper with that. So obviously that's going to scratch your floor, you know, if it comes into contact and, and spins and rubs against it. And that's where the floating brush housing comes in. It'll press that brush into the floor. So, um, in a previous video uh, about Roomba scratching floors, I showed you what can happen if you have a combination of rubber brushes and uh, floating um, brush housing that presses it into the floor. It basically devastates whatever surface that it comes into contact with once the brushes are dirty. In the video that I made about floor scratching, I explained that um, in a hybrid brush robot like this Roborock, um, typically only the bristles come in contact with the floor surface, whereas a Roomba floating um, brush housing and rubber brushes, the, um, the rubber parts and sometimes the body of the brush, depending on how firmly it presses down, come into contact. Now all that said, that doesn't necessarily mean that the S7 will scratch your floors. There could be several things that Roborock could do differently, like for example, a different brush material, um, a different floating um, brush housing design that doesn't quite push it as firmly into the floor, perhaps those little bumps that you see uh, between the fins. 
those might have something to do with preventing scratching. I have no idea. The point is, until I get this thing, until I put it on the plexiglass and see what it does, I won't know. And I sincerely hope that I'm wrong and it doesn't scratch floors. So thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Rumbato. Mm -hmm.